catch them in the pasture, run them in a pen, work them on the Sundays, do it all again, race them in the sand, buck them in the mud, drip a cowboy's sweat, bleed a cowboy's blood. I'm Zeke Thurston, 2016 World Champion Saddlebrock Rider, and you're watching the Pepper Stewart Show. That's what he said, not me. You guys are tuned in, staring, listening, wherever you're at, you're here. You're here, I'm here. Solo today, there's no one else. Is there no one else? No, there's no one else today, just me. But that's all right, we will fly through this thing with uh, no birds, no birds, no birds in the engine. Hopefully, I don't know. We'll see. we got a good show, though. we got a good show lined up for you guys anyway, whether you like it or not. I don't know how much TV you watch, reality or otherwise, but I got stuck on a show. I never, never really much into reality TV. I think I watched reality TV back in the old days when cable first happened and there was an MTV show. Well, they crammed all these people in a house called a real world. I think I watched that, and that was it. Um, and that was uh, many, many moons ago. So anyway, not much on reality TV. Well, anyway, I decided to uh, do like everyone else, all these streaming services, and I got Peacock. And I pulled up Peacock, watched some shows on there, and then I started watching Traders. And I was like, wow, that's f interesting. So we kept watching that, all those seasons in different countries. Then... There was a character on there that was pretty interesting, kind of ruthless, kind of nonchalant-esque from another show. So I was like, huh, I want to see what that show is. So anyway, stumbled upon Below Deck. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, it's been out for a long time. I didn't know that. I just started watching from season one, and I'm up to season seven now. So I've watched six or seven seasons of the original and I've jumped over and watched a couple of the Below Deck Mediterraneans watched those too and uh, there is a captain on that boat there's a couple of different captains in the different seasons and Captain Sandy Captain Sandy is uh, one of the captains and we are going to talk to her uh, today and find out about what happens on the boat and uh, how she became a captain what what uh, piqued her interest in, in Captain and big super yachts and I'm talking these are big yachts they're like 200 foot they, they put my little 30 foot regal to shame uh, they could pick it up and put it on top of the yacht and they do that with other boats they pick up other boats and put on top of the yacht yeah it's pretty crazy but it, it's, it's been entertaining I, I, I'm kind of not want to say fascinated with the show but I enjoy the show because I learn a little bit about the boating and, and water water stuff and water sports not like that video um, so it's good stuff because I've already talked to her after a while and then uh, we'll dive into some PBR action what's happening with the PBR professional bull riders see what's going on um, we've teased it before but the tease is over we are going to talk to Paulo Krimber today and um, he's the new coach of the Florida Freedom and we're going to talk to him see what's going on uh, with that find out about some teams and then find out about, uh, about John what's John been up to so we'll do that we've got a lot of stuff for you we're going to have fun with that. Uh, we've got uh, your favorite cattle market news. we got the American coming up. we got the Thunder Cow of Oklahoma. You're probably like, what is that? We're going to tell you. Uh, the American Western Horseman. Um, something crazy happens in Japan. I don't know why. We're going to tell you about that. Uh, some guys trying to set records or sinkholes. Have you ever won a lifetime supply to anything? We're going to tell you about those. Uh, the Scottish Highland Trophy has been missing for centuries. They found it. They found it. And uh, we may even have some tunes from our uh, friend of the show, Doc West, man. But what I want to do right now is tell you about a, uh, a sponsor we brought on here, a new sponsor that's kicking on with us. They do radios. So let's uh, see what this is all about. Let's see how it works. Hey Garrett, this is Steve with Rapid Radio. Uh, can you hear me? Got you loud and clear, Steve. Welcome to Rapid Radios. We have a staff of 15 people right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. 
Our radios are not only inexpensive, but they provide coverage anywhere, coast to coast. Whether you're looking for a radio for your small business or trying to keep communications with your kids or the elderly, Rapid Radios are a great solution for you. We have tens of thousands of happy customers all across the globe. Some of our customers include Fortune 500 companies, local police and fire, the, the Department of Homeland Security, Border Control, celebrities, and more. All of our products are backed by 100% satisfaction guaranteed. So rest assured, if you're not happy, we'll refund you. Some people on social media might think this is too good to be true. Well, I went ahead and flew one of my team members, Garrett, out to Miami, Florida. I'm sitting here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. That's 1,461 miles away from me. Let's see how it works. Hey, Garrett, this is Steve with Rapid Radio. Uh, can you hear me? Got you loud and clear, Steve. Awesome. How's the weather there in uh, Miami? How's the, the temperature? Probably better than it is here in Michigan, I hope. It's a beautiful sunny and 75 down here in Miami. Beautiful sunny and 75. All right, Garrett, will you take care, man? Thank you. And we'll talk to you soon. All righty, I'll see you when I'm back in Michigan. The Rapid Radio is working just perfect. Crystal clear communication, state to state, over a thousand miles. With Rapid Radios, you can communicate instantly, hundreds or even thousands of miles away in a group setting or one-on-one. -on -one. We provide the service, the nationwide coverage, and no monthly fees. Check out rapidradios.com for more information. What? what happened oh hey rapid radios right here this is it so i've got a set of these and uh i've been testing testing these out we're doing some tests um traveling around different locations different places testing them out so right now i'm in the uh the review stage of the radios um so far it's so far it's been it's been pretty good they the radios they come to you and if you get like we've got a set so they come pre cro pre uh pre-programmed from the from their factory or whatever they mail them to you in their program you turn them on uh give it a minute and then bam they're connected if you have more radios they'll connect them if you add more radios later and say hey i need to buy two more radios i need them on this network and it's and they'll fix it up now the radio has different settings where there's a group setting where you can have a group radio chat or you can individual radio chat with somebody so uh that that feature there is uh is pretty good um like i said we've been testing them out different places and seeing what they do um there is no like he said there is no monthly fee there's no monthly fee okay the radios come to you ready to go you buy the radio i don't remember what the price is you can pretty look it on the internet and it comes to you and it's activated for a year good to go now you do have to pay another fee the next year to keep your radio going but it's only 50 bucks okay 50 bucks for a whole nother year to use your radio so you can't beat that with cell service a lot of folks buy these that have family across the country like he was doing in the video where they'll you know you can talk to your family from wherever or if you're out out in the fields what we're doing is we're trying them out um in the pastures you know different remote locations trying them out seeing how they work and it's kind of what we've been doing with them and like i say we're in the, still in the testing phase and uh i, I, I like them they're working working out good they keep a charge for a long time and there's so many different options you can do with them so rapid radio, rapid radios check it out google it look it up they also offer other radios too like emergency radios and stuff like that so uh check check them out they come like i said they come preloaded ready to go with the sim card already in them and that's it you just go with it you just go with it man um what else we got going on we do have uh a guy named Ryan and he is created his own event called the Ryan Rodeo all right uh, he wants to be a record breaker of Ryan's so this organization that caters strictly to people named Ryan aims to break the Guinness World Record for the largest same name gathering in Texas uh, the Ryan Meetup is based in New York City. And they're going to hold its first Ryan Rodeo in Texas, which aims, which has an aim toward breaking the record that was set in 2017 when 2,325 people named Ivan 
came together in Bosnia and hedro something or another. I don't know what that word is. Uh, the gathering schedule for Saturday at 5 p.m. in Austin at Buckwild. Uh, it's going to be a rip roaring time. They're going to gather up as many rinds as they can. <laughs> don't be surprised if Ryan starts some square dancing. After all, you can't spell country without R Y. Um, so check that out. The event is going to have uh, a bull riding as well. So they're going to have uh, local music by Ryan Hunter and a bull riding. So that's going to be that's going to be happening in Austin. Austin, stay weird. That is what they're doing. Um, do we have, do we have the one and only legendary yacht, super yacht captain? We do. We've got, we've got, we told you about a guest, uh, f from, uh, from the seas, super yacht, a super yacht captain and the super yachts. I'm fascinated with those because those are like a hotel on water. And uh, we're going to talk to Captain Sandy. Captain Sandy, what is happening? Hi. Thank you for having me. Oh, okay. So uh, I want to dive back a little bit and see. I've, I've watched the show that, that you've been on, the Below Deck show, and watched that and kind of see. And so what I'm curious, the curiosity that got me was at, at what point growing up or, or your background where you was like, man, captain in boats, driving boats, that's where I want to be. You know, it's so far from how I grew up. I actually grew up on a ranch and we had horses and cows and pigs and lots of animals. My dad was a hunter. We had 42 uh, dogs <laughs> and we always had a bass boat. So we grew up water skiing um, and I answered an ad in the paper one day, got a job on a boat and started that trek and thought, wow, I can make money at the same time I'm getting a suntan and a workout. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool working on the water. And, and it, it looks interesting. So did you start, so I guess you start on smaller boats and then kind of worked towards it. How, how do you become, how do you become a captain? I know there's like a licensing thing and stuff like that. So how does, how do you do that? Well, I started on small boats, washing them, taking, maintaining them. And then I got a job for a guy who gave me the opportunity to learn, which was, you know, if you're, if you don't have that opportunity, opportunity to learn, how are you going to learn? <laughs> right. And the TV shows actually showing millions of people that there's jobs in the industry, which I had no idea. I just answered an ad in paper years ago. Um, it's pretty cool. The money's good. Sorry about the dog barking. <laughs> uh, little bear. No, uh, the money's great. And, um, the cool thing is, is I started a charity, uh, founded a charity and we have created an in-school curriculum, which will educate kids in school and let them know about the maritime industry. And it's something that I didn't seek. I had no idea it existed. And when I found it, it was like, oh my gosh, I can earn money in this industry. It was pretty awesome. Yeah, and, and it's and it's uh God, it's so it's so interesting watching the show. I know that's it's it's for T V and they they do you know, some things happen to kinda help with the T V, but how how much uh you know, involved from what, what you see on on T V to what is going on, is that are they're out there for you're out there what for a week or so and they've condensed that down to That's correct. We're out there for six weeks and uh there's a lot of footage. Um, everything that you see actually happened. No one produces us. It's a real job. They really act like that. And I think, um, it's the pressure. It's like a pressure cooker, right? So you're in this little, it's a big tube on the water, you know, <laughs> but we still, it's like small living quarters for people. They work, they wake up, they eat breakfast together. They work all day. They have lunch and dinner. And uh, it's always, it's like a family at sea with all the drama, just like at home. <laughs> yeah. You fight with your brothers and sisters or your parents, it's the same thing. The only difference is it's a real job. We are responsible for lives at sea. And, you know, you just got to keep them on that track. Uh, when they start to lose it, I just say, go count your cash under your pillow. That's why you're here. <laughs> right, right. And, and you've been at it, for, you've been at this for a while and you've been fairly successful. You know, you were... You won the Distinguished uh, Crew Award. 
uh, you had the fire, you had the pirates. I, I watched that. I watched that episode. You talked about that. So I was like, what happened? So what, what happened with the fire? And then what happened with the pirates? Well, you know, um, pirates are thieves at sea. So they're everywhere. Uh, not just in the red sea. Um, they're in the, they're everywhere. Caribbean. And, um, I was uh, transporting a boat, uh, for an owner in Dubai and, uh, on the way our boat caught on fire at the time, Yemen was in a civil war. Um, there had been a lot of pirate attacks. Uh, the year prior, the USS Cole was attacked. It was an election year, so it was like polarizing. And uh, we had security on board. He was getting intel. <laughs> he kept informing me, and I was like, listen, all you're doing is stressing me out. When the pirates are off the bow of the boat, let me know that. <laughs> That's right. the time to tell me. <laughs> Not, you know, build me up. Yeah. So we had the fire. The cool thing is, is that when you're on a boat, you train, train, train. We do fire drills, man overboard drills. We never stop training. So we're prepared. Uh, we handled it really well. Um, it was the calm in the middle of the storm. Uh, we did not get, uh, you know, no pirates boarded us, but we called a warship because there's a coalition of warships after September 11th that monitor those bodies of water. I heard warship 68. I called that warship. It rescued us, took us into Hadida, Yemen. Uh, where I spent 13 days um, wondering if we were going to get, you know, taken. So <laughs> the good news is, is we didn't, and uh, we made it out alive. Golly, that's that sounds that sounds insane. <laughs> yeah, it was it was stressful. So now that you've you've been on the boat for a while. You've done that for a while, and now you're you know you're going on to speaking engagements. Have you got the book out? How did the book how the book come to be? Be be the calm or be the storm? You know, um, the book came from the fans. Uh, they watch the show. They go, oh, we love your leadership uh, skills. And I just think, what leadership skills? All I do is treat people how I would like to be treated. That's all I do. I always think that when I have to let someone go, they already feel bad. Why would I make them feel worse? Um, I, come, I come from the human element side. And we're actually taught that in C-School. We have to take a class. I think it's called... Um, what do they call it today in the corporate world? D, E, and I. Uh, so we take, it's called human element. It's called mm -hmm. health. And we take that class because we have to learn how to treat others. We have to learn that when you're at sea, these are your people that are going to put, you know, they're going to be in your lifeboat. So you don't want them, you know, <laughs> putting a hole in your lifeboat. You yeah. want them to help you paddle the lifeboat. And uh, it's just about leadership. The book is great. I'm very proud of it. It was the hardest thing I ever did in my life to sit down I had a collaborator because I am not a writer who grilled me daily and um, just talking about my life, sea stories. And, you know, I come from a long line of addiction in my family. So I struggled with that. I got sober at the age of 25. And it's like my life has been aligned for me. When you do the next right thing in life, things just come your way. You know, what when you're when you're just out there, you know, and it's about, you know, me, 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 it's not like that in life. It's all about giving back, um, taking care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. And um, that's what I try to do on a daily basis. It is not easy. It takes work and perseverance. And just like today, my sister came to visit my birthday's tomorrow. She's from Florida. She wanted to see Red Rocks, but to get to the top of Red Rocks, <laughs> it is a hike. So she was like ready to turn around. And I'm like, it's worth the climb, mm -hmm. you know, don't come this far and then give up, continue on your climb, but take rest along the way, right. recharge your batteries. And so basically the book is about that. Okay. And so the, I guess the book that's on Amazon, uh, on Amazon. Yes. Yeah, so you can get it everywhere. anywhere. Um, okay. Yeah. Okay. And one of the questions I've got for that boat, when you're docking that boat, does the boat go sideways? Does it have a does it have a setting to where once you roll up you can float Wish. sideways, or do you have to <laughs> yeah. manually turn that thing? I have to make it move sideways. Um, you know, we don't have a stern thruster. We just have two engines and a bow thruster. Half the time the bow thruster doesn't work properly, so you're really struggling. The reality is, is you're only good as your team when it's docking, when you're docking, because I don't have eyes in the back of my head. Mm -hmm. I can't see. There's, you know, it's a 190-foot boat. I'm, you know, 
probably 45 feet in and you can't see behind you. So you have to trust your people. And again, it's like investing in your team. So your team have your back and um, so far so good. I mean, I, you know, I haven't damaged it. That's the good news. I've, I've, I watch, I watch so much. I've tried to, I'm trying to figure out how to, because my boat's tiny. It's 30 foot. It's a little 30 foot regal. That's not tiny. And that's not tiny. And I've, I've done crash into the dock, knocked the hole in the side of it. Because that, my, the boats, previous boats okay. I had before that were smaller boats, and they were easy to maneuver. But in the in the docks, I just I just fight with it all the time. So I've been watching. Every time y'all get ready to dock, and y'all are sitting, I'm watching where they're going, what they're doing, how they up, back, what's happening. See, but the difference is your boat's a lot lighter, so it's more affected by wind and current, whereas our boat's a lot heavier. Yes, if you have a big wind, it starts the momentum. Mm -hmm. It can work against you. Also, I have a team. We prepare before we go into the dock. So we always talk about our approach, what my expectation is. We always have that conversation. They ask me what side fenders are on, where are we going on the, you know, in the marina. So it's all about communication and preparate, you know, preparing for docking and practice. You know, we practice together. Just like if you watch the beginning of our season, we're not as smooth as yeah. we are three or four charters in. It comes with practice. And that's what I need. I need, I need a lot more practice. <laughs> but this watching this show, I, I, I don't know. I, I watched, I think, the, the Mediterranean seasons. And then I was like, well, what is this? And I started watching from season one. I think I'm like season seven or eight of the original thing. And it's just, it's entertaining. I'm learning stuff. And then, the, you know, the, the crew makes it uh, even, even better when they decide to go out and, and uh, have dinner. Yes. I'm glad <laughs> I'm not at those dinners. That's all I got to say. I just, what I, I just I just I wonder is you know a lot of the a lot of the people that is on the cast with you when when the show airs the show comes out they watch that back and go oh my god I cannot believe I did that I'm sure they do <laughs> I mean the reality is that you forget the cameras are there because of the fourth wall they yeah. teach us not talk to the cameramen mm -hmm. and women so we they'll get in trouble so we you know we don't want to get them in trouble so we have that fourth wall yeah and yeah. people forget so they drink a little and they start <laughs> behaving <laughs> a certain way and then they yeah. watch and go oh lord well maybe I'm, i shouldn't drink too much i'm like don't don't you realize in your bunk that didn't you see the camera right there watch i mean it's right there yeah but, yeah God, i think we've got it we've got a picture of the book we've got a picture of that book over there don't we let's find yeah, this I have a book. See, oh book. yes awesome yeah. thank you thanks for that yeah, so right go there. To, yeah, go anywhere and buy it. Amazon has it on sale right now. The uh, Kindle's on sale. They're they're all on sale. Now the uh, the youth thing you were talking about earlier is that can that be found on your website as well for the foundation? Yeah. So here's the plan. Uh, the wonderful thing. I'm in the state of Florida. Um, they funded this entire program, so it's going to roll out in Florida first. And my goal is to roll this out in every state across America because there, I wasn't college bound. I got kicked out of 11th grade. I was on that merry-go-round. The maritime industry said, hey, we'll take you <laughs> <laughs> when everyone else said no. Yeah. And uh, it's just, if you're committed and it's hard work, but it's like a feel good work. Yes, you have your days where it's challenging and you have some clients or owners that aren't so wonderful to work for. <laughs> But if you keep your eye on the goal, it's a great career. And we're 50,000 people short in our industry. We hmm. need 50 more thousand people. You work in a shipyard, electric electricians, plumbers, carpenters, welders make 20% more than they do, uh, you know, on a typical employment. Huh. Yeah, I, I, I never think about that. And, and you think about you know, like the people that work out in this oil rigs out on the sea, you know, out on the oceans and stuff like that, being in the, in the ocean, and you never really think that much. And then that got me thinking when I was watching this about the the deckhands and the you know and your, and your stewards and all that stuff. That it's it's a rotating, you know, it's a rotating in, employment thing where you get different people. So when when you have that on those ships, do you get to pick who comes on your crew, or do they just that you just randomly so, get stuck with whoever. Yeah, good question. I get to pick crew when I'm not on the show. <laughs> As you, you see the casting calls. They do cast for crew. They cast for, you know, but, you know, the clients pay. 
um, the crew have, and it's usually crew that really never worked on boats before, which I love because you get, you get to give them the opportunity to see if they really want to work in this industry. And some people stay and some people go. Yeah. Some people transition into yacht sales, like Bobby. Bobby's in yacht sales now. Um, you know, Bugsy's on her. Uh, you know, Bugsy's is still uh, working on boats. Malia is her track is to be captain. Mm -hmm. uh, Max, uh, from my first season, is a first officer on a boat in Spain. Uh, Wes has a big license now, and Joao is now a captain on a forty meter. Hmm. So these people, they, you know. Our show gives that opportunity for people to yeah. advance. Um, if you're there for TV, it's not going to work. Uh, be there to do the job yeah. and, you know, cast for the show. Yeah. But more importantly, you don't have to be from a state that's surrounded by water. You can be from Colorado or any other place, Wyoming, wherever, Austin, and you can work on a boat because all it takes is one class. It's called STCW. Go to Maritime Professional Training. That's where I went to school. It's in Fort Lauderdale. The, it, that class costs about $900 for the week. Once you have that certificate, you need to pass a physical and a drug test. Um, and then you're at sea. Huh. But there are other jobs that are land-based. If you don't want to, you have a family, mm -hmm. you might have to relocate near the shipyard or in sales or charter broker. There's so many positions. Hmm. It's wonderful. Yeah, and I, I've never, I've never thought about that at all. And then watching this, it, it picks my interest. I, I even look at, even watching the show, I'm thinking, man, if this was 20 years ago, I'd mind trying to be a deckhand or something, just to get out and yeah. and try it and, and see how it goes. Yeah, but, pretty awesome. So how's how's the book tour? How's the book tour been going? You've had book signings and, Good and some I, speakings. You know, honestly, uh, great. A uh, Detroit boat show brought me in. Um, sold a lot of books there. Met a lot of people. I just did the Miami boat show. Um, I, I'm running out of steam. Uh, I need a little break. Uh, yeah. so I'm not doing the Palm beach boat show, but I am doing a women's expo in Jacksonville. Okay. Um, it's in March. I think it's like the 15th or six, 16th and 17th of March in Jacksonville, Okay. uh, which is really cool. So I'll be selling my book. I think I'm speaking on stage. And then after that, I'll probably do one other one and then uh, off to Europe, hopefully. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right, that will work. It sounds good. Uh, we'll uh, throw up your web throw your website out again. It's uh, uh, it's captainsandyon.com. There it goes, captainsandyon.com. <laughs> they can get yeah. the book. Think about it. They can check out your your merch, your bo order books. If they want to have you come speak somewhere, they could book you there. Yeah, uh, that's right. I so in fact, I got two big speaking deals coming up. I'm very excited about and. I love speaking because if I can help change someone's life, it's worth it. Of course, we all have to make money, and that's such a feel-good way. Mm -hmm. I love my job as a captain. Uh, I get to take people out to sea, and you know, hopefully, it's good weather, and they have yeah. the best experience ever. Um, and then, you know, pay it forward by showing crew members. But it's now I'm at that stage of my life. I'm turning 59 tomorrow. That I just want to do the next right thing and help people. Yeah along the way my journey of making money you know like mm -hmm. it's a it's a win-win right right okay all right okay well, uh, captain sandy man i appreciate you uh visiting with me and Thank filling you. me in on on what you got going on in the show and, and stuff like that and uh we'll keep an eye out on uh, what you got going on maybe you swing into dallas to a boat show one day and uh yes, and catch you there. i love dallas <laughs> i love dallas i got a lot of friends in dallas yep all right. All right. Well, Captain, I appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you down the road. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Captain Sandy Yawn, if you have not watched the show or if you've not checked out what she has going on, do it. Go order the book. You can grab that sucker on, uh, on the Amazon. You can get everything on the Amazon. Everything. Everything is on the Amazon is what I've been told. What is not on the Amazon is Doc West Band that has a tune. We may just throw a little tune out and I'll let you guys enjoy some some Doc West Band about Oklahoma because we've got a story for Oklahoma. So check out this tune and we'll tell you about the uh, the thunder.
just want you to know how much fun I have with you. I don't know. I just, I really think we might have something here. So I hope you come see me soon. Surprise in an Austin that I wasn't looking when you found me. You saw only in my eyes. Well, you put me on through the dance floor, then you pulled me into your room. When you pulled away to Tulsa, you left me way too soon. So if you ever get lonely, Oklahoma thunder cows there is a thunder cow in Oklahoma uh, residents near an Oklahoma lake reported numerous encounters of a mysterious creature a loose cow wandering the area that has been dubbed as thunder cow and uh, KOCO TV sent us a clip of that I believe she's real. For over a year, people near Lake Thunderbird have had mysterious encounters of the bovine kind, a cow that shows up in people's yards and can't be caught. Not only were there hoof prints, but she left a nice little cow patty behind. She hangs out around Lake Thunderbird, so that's how she got her name, Thunder Cow. We talked to one woman who met Thunder Cow in January. She just sort of popped out of nowhere. Um, and it startled us because, I mean, it's a loose cow, um, and it's pitch black outside i was like you know what i can post on the the neighborhood facebook page just to kind of put out an alert and when i did that 
that's when I started getting posts after post after post in response telling me that, oh, hey, that's just Thunder Cow. Locals have no beef with this cow. Some even call it the mascot of Alameda. One person seeing a post wondering if she was still out there, calling her one cool bovine. And each new post makes the legend even more mystical. Many have tried, but no one can get her. And she travels under the, um, she travels in the dark. So is this Norman's very own Bigfoot or does she have an owner? It's unclear for now, but locals say they often see her grazing here on the shores of Lake Thunderbird during the day. She's out there. Since Natalie Bevel's encounter, Thunder Cow hasn't hoped it back yet. But she has heard from others who've seen her in their yards. The legend of Thunder Cow continues to grow. <laughs> Colby Terrell, KOCO 5 News. Thunder Cow. The Thunder Cow is missing in action. Thunder Cow, they can't find the Thunder Cow. Uh, PBR stuff is happening. PBR is going on. Uh, let me tell you guys about something that's happening uh, back before the World Finals coming up in May. Uh, they're going to have a couple of events at the uh, Stuckyards at the Coliseum. They're going to have a couple things going on there. And they're going to have some music guests. So you can roll over the stockyards and watch uh, the PBR World Finals four-day eliminations and the two-day ride for redemption. That's May 12, 9 through 12, May 15 through 16 uh, at the uh, Coliseum. And they're going to have some people playing tunes there. You're going to have Levi Walker, May 9th and 12th, Stoney LaRue, Eric Burgett, and Andy Velo. <coughs> playing tunes out there for uh, for that and then you'll mosey on down to AT&T Stadium for some big big uh, big action for the PBR uh, the Los Angeles event had a sold out crowd the sold out Michelob Ultra PBR in Los Angeles just wrapped up uh, a couple of the young the young guns the young rookies made a statement or two at the event and uh one of those was uh, the youngster John Krimber. Let's see, uh, let's see what he did. Guys, being able to joke around with Blake Eichmann and Marco Rizzo, they were talking about who takes longer to shave today, who spends more time in the bathroom getting ready back at the hotel, and that kind of back and forth they said allows them to walk out here lighter and ready. weekend John Krimber has come through he's going to move to the lead he only needed 83 and three quarters so we've got a trio of teenagers at the top how about 86 and a half well this was a really good ride that's a good score ride but it's more than just a score ride here for me a big strong bull stepping ahead the whole time you heard me talking about a guy's movements earlier. Look where Krimber's movements are. Like, there's no wasted motion with his free arm. He ain't doing much with it. But he keeps finding that bull shoulders over and over to the middle, <laughs> not past the middle. There's his dad, Paulo Krimber, who you rode with for a number of years. Couldn't be a prouder papa in the state of California. John Krimber composed as always. Look at that group. Marco Rizzo on the right, Krimber in the middle, Clay Guyton on our left. Let's send it down to Keith. From one PBR legend to another legend in the making right there. And we've got the legend himself right here, Mr. Paulo Krimber. What is happening, Paulo? What are you up to? How are you doing, sir? Uh, we just got here in Jacksonville, Florida. Waited to start the, the weekend tomorrow. Excited to see those boys get on some bulls and ride them tomorrow. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you've taken over as the uh, as the coach for Florida. So how's how's your team looking? Yes, sir. I just got the the head coach job for the Florida Freedoms. I'm very excited about that uh, that change. Uh, Arizona was great for me. Uh, you know, I have some good boys there. I have to leave behind, but uh, that was time, you know, for this new new page of my life, and it was a great opportunity. I feel like we are 
putting a really good uh, team together. We're uh, signing some new guys, existing guys, and we just did a trade. Uh, it's just uh, I'm very excited about it. And we also have the first, um, the most ping pong balls. We have the biggest chance to have the number one team, you know, uh, pick for the draft. And uh, we have two first pick, uh, two picks in the first round. I'm very excited about that too. And and those picks you got coming up. I know you don't want to spill your hand yet, but uh, are you are you looking at looking at some of those young guys? You bet, you some, bet. Uh, for sure, if we can get John, that'll be great. Because uh, not just because his talent, but you know, I know him. I, I kind of help him get where he is. I think uh, it'll be easier to kind of continue that process we do. He feels good about me being in his corner, and I love to be. On his corner, I think will be a great matchup. Uh, Clay Guyton, great, com- I mean, great rider. Just uh, I know Clay, uh, Marco, and and it's just like they rode together in high school. They came up together. I know all of them. Um, you know, if I if I have a chance on all three of them, I'll get all three of them. <laughs> Just, just take them all. Just swap them all up. So since since you the bet. team since the team you know the teams had started and. How did the how did the guys um, perceive the, the teams? You know, when the, when the team concept first came about, and it's, it's been going for a while now. So, have the guys kind of made it transition to where you know you've been a, an individual for so long, but now you're as a team? Are, are they transitioning good to to working as groups? I think they got to uh, where they're liking more because I see like. JRV and some other guys mentioned in the locker room, you know, like they're missing the teams already. It's just, uh, it's a different team of sphere. I think the camaraderie and just the team, you know, bound, it's, uh, it's something to get, it's going to stuck. I think that's one of the, probably the best idea, uh, Sean Gleason have to create the team series. And, and I think that's going to be just, uh, to grow in the future. I, I see that growing way more than we are now. And, the guys like it because they have some guaranteed monies they don't have to ride for. They already show up to the event making some money. That kind of helped them, you know, not worry about anything. And then when you get a coach on your corner, they don't. They all know how to ride. It's just like tune them up with a little row position or body position or just doing, you know, feet position. It's a lot of little tweaks you can you can help them to reach a, a different level they may they might not even know they can get to that level it's that's what is the beauty about all that all right and, and now that you know with the talks of, of expansion expanding do you do you think that at some point it's going to expand out to possibly have it, a team in every state uh, i believe so i believe that's going to come to that i think sean uh Gleason wants to have about I, think, I don't know if it was 16 or 18 teams i'm, I'm not certain but it's uh, it's pretty close, and I think that we will probably come to uh, be a, a team season already around. I don't know. It's just something right now. We start off with eight teams. We got two expansion coming up this season. That's going to be ten teams. I think uh, in two years to have two more teams join, uh, and that say you know, that say something. I think that's a positive, really positive idea and mentality of a, a businessman and and how good the product is. And Sean is a it's a smart businessman. I know every decision he makes is going to be for the best of the sport, and uh, I'm just glad to be part of him. Now that you, you mentioned the expansions, I I hadn't looked into this yet, but do you, do you know where these expansion teams are going to be, or has it not been decided yet? Uh, I heard some he- uh, talking here and there, but I think they're going to announce that tomorrow. Uh, I don't want to spoil the uh, <laughs> the great news and. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, and I don't want to just take the chance to say something that's not true, but right. I think they're going to come up with those. Uh, they're talking, you know, a couple different places like uh, Oklahoma, California, New York, um, even uh, Colorado. Uh, I don't know which one it's going to be the two, but I mm-hmm. think it's going to be great, and I'm looking forward to this new season to come. Be, be more more challenging and have more, uh, more teams to uh... – to compete against yep yep and also give those guys those riders a, a job a, a better mm-hmm. opportunity to to learn especially for a group of young guys coming up you know it's not all of them they're not witty yet they're just so passionate for the sport their talents they just 
show up to ride bulls no matter what they are and that's something you know they can get, use a little tune up and it's going to open a lot of doors because for example i'm so glad john has this opportunity to come in and be part of something like that for marco and clay and and so many young brazilians coming like we brought like eight ten new brazilians just for teams last year missouri pretty much renew his whole team with all young brazilians and it's just something i think it's going to be great just for that because the marge from uh brazil and mexico and and australia and canada mm -hmm. to to review great talents you know because uh, sports needs to to kind of keep re renovating the talent and i think that's a great bridge for that yeah and, and they're coming up and and uh and like you know with the pbr you know paths with like their their touring pros and their minor leagues you have opportunities to 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 kind of farm these guys and work these guys up up to the ranks and and do you often kind of kind of scout some of those events and some of those guys to just you know just see who might help you out oh yeah i, I keep my eye on everywhere <laughs> like i try to watch as many events i can in brazil here prca open high school and and not like for this weekend the velocity br brings five guys up every two weekends which is the cut mm -hmm. yeah this weekend you're gonna see ramon de lima for the first time because he took a little longer in brazil and he lost some of the gave up his events mm -hmm. in the beginning of the season and he has to work his way back up through that lucas divino has already been here and he was kind of a little injured he went down he's coming back this weekend uh marco iguchi is coming back this week and it's just a lot of new names uh we we're seeing coming up and, and just joy i think that's a it's uh where the team it's going to come to eventually i think it's going to have like a group a group b and c where they you know they kind of switch from the a down to the c and the c come up to the a or you know the b kind of mm -hmm. go to that that process i think it's going to be a really interesting to, to see in the future Okay. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah, and it's 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 building, it's growing. I mean, the the coverage is there. The the expansion coming up is is going to help as well. And then it all uh, all come down to uh, to North Texas before too long. You bet. <laughs> all right, Paulo, man, I, I know you're busy there in Florida getting getting your guys ready. Y'all got a busy weekend ahead of you, and uh, I appreciate you uh, visit, visiting with us and, and filling us in on what what's going on and what you're up to. And uh, we wish you good luck, and we'll see you down the road. Hey, man, thank you for having me. I'm sorry we have to change so many times to get it done, but <laughs> yep. any time now, I love to be part of your show, and that's a great thing to uh, spread the word, what's going on behind the scenes, and uh, people get to know what's going on. I really appreciate you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you, sir. You have a blessed night. Bye-bye. Paulo Krember, right there. We got him on. We got it done. Filling you in. I tried – Marcus, I tried. I tried to get the information for you. Okay, he wasn't about. He wasn't gonna tell us. He wasn't gonna tell us who it was. But that's that's all right. It'll come out. It'll come out, and we'll know about those. Uh, probably by the time you watched this episode on the replay, you will know who it is. But anyway, good talking. Good talking with him. He's been a uh, PBR PBR legend right there, man. He's been in the game forever. You got his son coming up. If he's got those ping pong balls to draft with, that's going to be good too. Because you never know about them ping pong balls. I was at this one place, this one time, and some woman like almost shot me in the face with a ping pong ball. And I was like, where did that come from? Was it pickleball? Um, what else is happening out there in the world? We got, we got so many stories. We have so many stories. And so little time, and it's so great because it's coming up on the end. I don't have to tell you all this stuff. Um, what else do we want to throw in there, though, just for the just for the fun of it? Uh, we'll do Marcus's favorite story right here. Uh, so we got uh, in Japan. In Japan, I have no photos for this, so use your imagination. Uh, after more than one thousand years. Japan's Naked Man Festival's coming to an end. Uh, the annual annual event almost it's almost said it wrong right there. The annual event, commonly known as Naked Man Festival, came to an end after a thousand years due to declining population in the area. Uh, the 
The Summon Sai Festival, commonly known as the Naked Man Festival, involves hundreds of loincloth clad men gathering at the temple to wrestle for ownership of a bag of talismans blessed by the temple's chief priest. Man, I should have read this beforehand. This is terrible. Now, why do they cancel this? Who would want to wrestle for a bag of the priest stuff? What's in the bag? Now I want to know what's in the bag. <sighs> Dango Fung Janami, the priest, the chief priest of the temple, announced this year's festival will be held Saturday was the last. I think it should be. Um, this year's winner was a local resident who was... Uh, Kikuchi Tashaki, 49, who's a member of the Festival's Preservation Association. It's sad that it's ending, and I participated in hopes that it would be a memorable festival. Well, that doesn't sound fun. I will pass on that. Um, I guess, what else we got? We got the American and stuff, but we'll get to that next next week. If anybody wants, if anybody's watching, listening, whatever, I've still got a box of videos of Yellowstone 1923. If anyone wants one of those videos, shoot us an email and uh, we will mail those out to you until we run out. Yellowstone 1923. Hey, um, just a word of advice for your viewers. Do not Google Naked Man Festival. Oh yeah. So I'm being told don't Google Naked Man Festival. Mm -mm. Apparently it's not mm -mm. not what you think. I just tried to Google it to find out some more information for y'all and uh Luckily, some things were blurred, but uh, just just take my my advice, guys. Whoa, yeah, pass pass on that festival. <laughs> if you want to go to a festival, go to the Testicle Festival. What? Wait, what? The Testicle Festival. There's a uh, huge event every year. It goes on in Texas. I forget which town it is. It's the Testicle Festival, and they just they just fry up a bunch of calf fries. Oh. And they have bands play and stuff like that. It's not like golf. They're not rolling them around and golf balling them. Um, what else was I going to talk about? Is there anything I need to talk about? The American we can do next week because it's not close enough. Uh, the kettle market we can do that next week. I guess what? Let's do this. Let's roll. Let's roll out and get out of here on this video here. Um, this in Los Angeles. PBR was just in Los Angeles, so we're gonna get to Los Angeles here. There was a horse that was nearly swallowed in Los Angeles. That was not at the Man Festival, though. Um, oh, by a sinkhole. The horse was swallowed by a sinkhole. I missed that part. Firefighters in Los Angeles came to the rescue of a horse that ended up trapped when a sinkhole formed underneath where she was standing. Okay. 20-year-old Pasifino ended up trapped. They uh, took three hours to dig the 1,200. Okay. You said Pasifino. I know Pasifino is not 1,200 pounds. Um, but they brought it out, and I think they got a picture of it, of how it happened. A dramatic rescue unfolding today in Lakeview Terrace, where a 1,200-pound horse is freed after being trapped in a sinkhole. Yeah, there were ground and air crews from several local agencies combining their resources in this rescue effort. KTLA's Kimberly Chang live in Lakeview Terrace. She's got more on this really amazing rescue. Kimberly? Hi, what a great ending. We just spoke with the owners and they tell me obviously they are relieved after several hours stuck in a sinkhole. Firefighters and rescuers were able to pull this horse out safely. They say she really lived up to her name today. Lucky. There's no better ending than this. Lucky, a 20 year old horse that fell into a sinkhole in the backyard of this Lakeview Terrace home rescued safely. Juan Lostre says his wife was riding Lucky as she typically does when they started sinking into the ground. Wow, I can't believe it. it's, it's over. His wife made it out with some injuries to her side, but the roughly 1,200 pound horse became stuck in mud. I thought she tripped on, a, on, on the walkway uh, and she just fell down to her, like, her front legs, so my wife fell over her. Lostre tried to pull her out but couldn't. They called for help. Dozens of firefighters responded and started strategic efforts to get Lucky out without hurting her. So we gingerly used shovels to begin with, 
that didn't get enough we actually brought in heavy equipment with a bucket but as you notice that was a uh, pinpoint precision they would move enough back so that way it had a trench that way the dirt that they took out from that tractor bucket wouldn't fall back in on lucky after roughly three hours lucky was brought out without any major injuries does she look good to you oh yeah absolutely yeah yeah she's eating which is a good sign and walking uh, her legs are you know they didn't get you know damaged A fire official told me they can't say definitively what caused this sinkhole, but the homeowner says they blame the recent rain. Now, we're told that the uh, owner who was riding Lucky was injured, but she is expected to be okay. For now, reporting live in Lakeview Terrace, Kimberly Chang, KTLA 5 News. Terrific ending. Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs>